Today's video was a continuation of our short series covering important and useful tips when staying for a longer term in Lithuania. If you missed the first part, you can find it in the link in the description. Again, this video has been made with the support of Simona Sidarovicene, a lawyer specializing in immigration at a firm SPC Legal. So if you've come to Lithuania for work, you'll definitely need a work permit, although there are a few exceptions that relate to a person's citizenship or profession and other circumstances that have been established by national regulations. There are two types of employees who can apply for a temporary residence permit, or TRP, on the basis of employment, simple employees or highly skilled employees. Highly skilled employees are considered those holding a university diploma or degree who receive a salary that is at least 1.5 times the average monthly gross earnings in Lithuania. So at the moment, this amount will be 2,398 euros. If you're lucky enough to fit in this category, then your application would be examined twice as fast compared to the applications of simple employees. Highly skilled employees receive the so-called EU Blue Card, which also provides some additional rights. Based on Simona's experience, it's recommended that those willing to apply for a TRP on the basis of employment or business should seek the assistance of a lawyer. Why? Well, there are a lot of tricky requirements, including some challenging words which need to be mentioned in the documents being submitted to immigration authorities. At the same time, a person applying for residence in Lithuania on the grounds of work or business will be requested to submit a big package of documents, and collecting these could become quite challenging. In addition to your residence application paperwork, a separate application for a work permit must be submitted too. If some documents are found to be missing or legal requirements haven't been met, then your application will be rejected, and you'll need to submit the application again, while booking an additional appointment at the immigration office. Like we mentioned last time, a lawyer isn't necessary, but in some cases can be very helpful in making the process smoother. So next up is something that's not fair but true. Citizens of some countries are more privileged than others. Citizens of the United States, Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Japan, and South Korea fall into this category. These citizens aren't required to get a work permit in Lithuania and are also exempt from having to submit a non-criminal record. Instead, they are only required to submit a written affirmation that they were never convicted. You should also know that the examination of applications for these countries tends to be faster than the standard four-month processing time. Instead, applying as a citizen of one of these countries means your application will only take three months. Of course, all applications can be completed in half the time if the fee for an expedited process is paid for. Moving on, if you're at the stage where you can consider applying for permanent residency, you should keep in mind that there can't be any gaps between your previous residence permits. As a result, your TRP renewal must be planned in advance. Currently, this can be done as early as four months prior to your residence permit's expiration. If you've lived in Lithuania for three years, then you should know that you can invite members of your family to come to Lithuania. Exceptions to this minimum time can be made for those who have applied or held TRPs on specific grounds, including highly qualified employees, businessmen, citizens of the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, etc. Finally, when you apply for your TRP, you're usually required to prove that you have sufficient funds to live in Lithuania, at least for one year. You'll also need to show that you have the proper health insurance coverage. When it comes to proving that you have sufficient funds, this must meet the minimum salary established in Lithuania. At the moment, that number is 730 euros per month, and there should be enough for the entire duration of your requested temporary residence permit, or for at least one year. The easiest way to prove compliance with this requirement is to submit a statement of your bank account proving that you have enough savings for at least one year. Adding to Simona's advice, I should mention that the migration officer assessing my own documents wasn't sure if investments, such as stocks, were acceptable. She instead requested that I show actual cash savings instead. There was a secondary problem during my appointment when the banking app that I showed her on my phone didn't appear to have my own name anywhere within the program. This created a slightly stressful situation, but it was eventually resolved. It's unlikely that you will be as unlucky as me, but just make sure that if you're proving sufficient funds using your bank's website or app, that your name is clearly displayed somewhere within it. As for proper health insurance, this can easily be obtained from any insurance company operating within Lithuania. The price for this type of health insurance, valid for one year, will of course vary from company to company. However, it will be somewhere between 100 and 200 euros for the year. Health insurance issued by foreign insurance companies might also work, but in these cases, foreigners should make sure their policies are valid within Lithuania, as well as the entire Schengen area. There are also additional requirements as part of the insurance policy, such as a minimum amount of coverage and the coverage of repatriation expenses, among others. So that's it for our advice on applying for residency in Lithuania. Again, I'd like to thank Simona of SPC Legal for her support and expertise in making this video. As I mentioned last time, Simona has been helping clients navigate the immigration system for nine years and has assisted people, including me, in all sorts of different situations. At the same time, Simona has been called upon by the Lithuanian government to advise on the reform of the country's migration policies, which says a lot about her level of expertise. As always, it's very possible to make your way through the process without the help of an immigration lawyer, but if your situation is complicated, someone like Simona can be a lifesaver. 
Her information can be found in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.